And in this video, I'm gonna to talk to you about the importance of not ever doing one specific thing with your credit profile. We all know that our credit report and our credit score is important to our financial lives. We know that not only do we need it to maybe obtain loans, such as a mortgage loan in the future at a low interest rate if we have a good credit score, but we also know, and if you didn't know, you'll be shocked to hear that, that employers look at our credit scores and our credit profiles, as do insurance companies and other interested parties into our financial lives. So it would behoove you, and it would behoove me, the average Joe, to make sure we are critically focused on our credit score. But there's one thing you should not ever do, and we're gonna talk about it in this video right now. What's up, you guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Joe. Here on this channel, we talk about all things personal finance that affect people like you and me, the average Joe. Whether that is saving money, whether it's budgeting for the very first time, saving money for your kid's college, saving for retirement, how to utilize credit cards safely, and every single thing in between. Okay, so hopefully you've seen on this, on this channel or other channels, or if you're not, you're gonna learn really quickly, your credit score is determined by five key factors. See if I can do it this my pie again. There we go. There we go. So we've got 35% here, 30% here, 15, 10, and 10. So here we've got your payment history. That's important. How you pay back your obligations. We've also got utilization, meaning depending on how much money you have available to you with your credit cards or lines of credit, how much of it are you using on a monthly basis? We also have your age of credit, how established you are. We've also got mix of credit, the different types of accounts, as well as new accounts, credit inquiries. Okay, so we know that these are the five factors that impact our credit score. And this doesn't happen overnight. We have to take specific and consistent actions each and every month to build strong and responsible credit scores. As I've talked about in previous videos, there are ways that people are trying to hack this type of system to misrepresent a credit profile to the creditors out there. And there's a number of ways that can be done, but the one thing I see popping up all over the place is the idea of, and this is what you should never ever do with your credit, it is purchasing authorized user trade lines. What? So a trade line is a different specific types of accounts that you have opened in the past. And those credit accounts are reported by the credit card companies or whatever the creditor it is to the credit reporting agencies, Experian, TransUnion, Equifax, on a monthly basis. And that data is curated and then creates your credit profile and thus your credit score. So when you open up a trade line or a credit account, you have your account, Your payment history and the amount that you owe and the balance that you carry and the monthly payment you have is reported back to the credit reporting agencies each and every month. So with these credit accounts, you may or may not have added an authorized user, a spouse, husband or wife, it's the same thing, uh, son or daughter, father, mother, and with that, you, all of that credit history, your payment history, how much of the line that you use is reported back to the credit reporting agencies, the Experian, the Equifaxes, the TransUnions, each and every month, and that history is curated and then given to lenders, which is part of your credit report and thus your credit score. So with that, if you add an authorized user at any point during the time frame, whether it's in the first year, the first month, or 10 years down the road, that history is then adopted by that person, even if they had nothing to do with it. Let's say you have a very established trade line. Let's say it's got a limit of $20,000. And of that, you owe like nothing or maybe just $1,000. Balance. And it's 10 years old. Okay, so you've got this here and a 100% on time history. This right here is a very beautiful trade line. It's one that you would definitely hope to adopt over a number of years of earning it. Now, let's say with this, you've got somebody who's got a credit score of 600. They've got three accounts 
and they've got, let's say here, on those three accounts that are total years old, there's two years old, all of them average, and you've got a balance owed of $1,000 over a total limit of $2,000. That equals a 50% Utilization rate, that's not good. You wanna stay at or below 30, definitely below 10 or even 5% if you can help it. In this scenario, what you can do is you could add somebody here as an authorized user to this account. And what that does is that dramatically changes their utilization and their age of their credit and potentially their on-time on payment history as well. Let me show you here. So in this case, you had 50% utilization, but if you were to adopt this one here, now you owe $3,000 over 20 plus 22,000. This number right here is somewhere around like, I don't know, 15%. It's below 30%. This was hurting you. Now you're below 20%, uh, maybe 15-ish. With this situation here, you've dropped your utilization big time. This is a positive number now. And you also have a maybe a lot more history of online payments. You've also got 10-year history. This is going to greatly increase your credit score if you factor this in. Here is where this, the even truly sinister part comes in. Did I say sinister already? Super sinister part is companies have popped up and they've found people with these types of trade lines and said, hey, you wanna sell these trade lines and have somebody be an authorized user for a short amount of time. We'll make sure there's no risk to you. We might even guarantee you don't have any fraud. They won't get a card. They can't use the account. There's no risk to you and we'll pay you hundreds of dollars. And what they'll do is they'll, they'll curate these accounts and they'll find then these borrowers out there that have a low credit score that are in need of credit repair and say, hey, for a couple hundred dollars, maybe even a couple thousand dollars, would you like to adopt this trade line on your account? which is gonna greatly increase your score. But here's the problem with this scenario. This is, and this is the part where, oh, average Joe, you're not for the average Joe, you're just not about helping people. Yes, I am, as long as it is the right thing to do. And this, this situation here, when you are buying someone's trade lines and putting it on your credit report is a complete misrepresentation of your credit profile. And by extension, I would call that, in my opinion, if I was a lender, I'd call that credit fraud. You are then telling other lenders out there, and think about like a mortgage lender who's looking to lend hundreds of thousands of dollars to you. They think your credit score is, let's say, this with this, you're now at 720 over two months later. 720 is not an accurate representation of your credit profile. You're a 600, maybe if you've done the right things over the past few months, maybe you're a 620, 630, 640. You are not a 720. And as a result, they may be lending you lots of money under the perceived risk of a 720 borrower when in really, reality you're down here when they might not have even made the loan at all and if they did make the loan at a higher interest rate. Technically, this is not officially against the law, meaning no one has come out and said, this breaks law, this, 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 and this, section this of this code. But that doesn't mean it's morally the right thing to do. And I would imagine that the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, at some point, the CFPB is going to put out some guidance on this because this is a complete misrepresentation of your credit profile. These companies out there will say this is 100% legal, but that doesn't mean it's the right thing to do. And I would expect that l the legality of this to change at some point in the future. So what can you do? I've talked enough about what you should not do, and please don't do this with your credit score because this is all about willingness to repay, and we want to earn this, don't try to hack the system. What can you do? Definitely focus on these things right here. Your payment history and your utilization. Make a commitment to always pay on time each and every month. And all you have to do is make the minimum payment to do that. Make the minimum payment on your accounts at a minimum and get that on time history. But then work on your utilization. Now, if you've got utilization of 50, 60, 70%, it probably means that you are in credit card debt, which means we've got to get rid of it because that is adding stress to your life. How do you do that? Well, there's two main methods. We've got the snowball method and we've got the avalanche method. Two different methods of paying off debt quickly. Snowball is all about the lowest debt amount to the highest, which means you're gonna order them from lowest to highest and you're gonna put as much money as you can on the lowest debt and pay the minimums on all of these over here. 
and pay as much money as you possibly can each and every month to that lowest amount of debt is paid off. Then you take all of that money that you paid and apply it with the minimum of the next one to that account and then the next one and then the next one month over month so that it grows into a big snowball going downhill and gets bigger and bigger and you can pay off your debt quickly. The avalanche method is based on the highest interest rate to lowest. And with this, you are targeting the highest interest rate because by extension, you are then paying the highest amount of interest on that account. And you'd pay as much as you can on this account and the minimums on the rest of them until you pay that first account off, which may take longer than normal depending on how much you owe on that highest interest rate. And then you would pay that whole amount and then the minimum for the next one and pay that for the next account. And then the next account until you pay it off. This is gonna save you interest and potentially time over the snowball method but my guess would be, and I don't have the numbers to back it up, is more people stick with this method because they get some quick wins out of the gate. Some of those smaller debts are paid off quickly. Point is, you have some ability to take some steps to lower your, keep your payment history strong and your utilization you can drop organically this way and that with your age will continue to build. This kind of credit repair takes time, but it's the right thing to do. I've put out a few more videos on this topic, especially breaking down these five components of your credit score. So make sure to check out those videos as well. Here at the Average Joe on Money channel, we talk about all things personal finance that help people like you and me, the average Joe, with all things personal finance, whether it is paying off debt, utilizing credit cards safely, utilizing credit cards for rewards and free travel, paying, uh, building up an emergency fund, saving money, saving for your kid's retirement, saving for your retirement, your kid's retirement, no, saving for your kid's college, saving for your retirement and every single thing in between. That's what we talk about. Make sure to hit that like button below. And also, if this kind of stuff is helpful, if you need that in your life as the average Joe, hit the subscribe button below and click on the bell to be alerted to all of my weekly recurring videos. I'll see you in the next video.